Hello, and welcome to the When Harry Met Ani podcast. This is episode number 16. My name is Emily. I live in Hershey, Pennsylvania with my husband and my two cats, Harry and Onyx. The name of this podcast, which is a knitting and crocheting podcast, is When Harry Met Ani because we got both our cats from the Humane Society. Harry came first and Onyx, aka Ani, came second and therefore When Harry Met Ani. Um, If you are a return viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer checking me out, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel so that you know when I record and upload a new video. I try to record a podcast every other week. Um, I've been sticking with that schedule just the past two episodes, um, so hopefully I can stick with it. Um, If you would like to follow me on social media or connect there, my Instagram is at WhenHarryMetAni, and I'm on Ravelry as M. Meister. Okay, so that's all of the introduction stuff that I wanted to get through. Um, I want to just record this quickly today. Uh, I have a lot to talk about, but um, I do want to keep it to about 30 minutes. And also, we're going to grab dinner after this, and uh, Logan and I are really hungry. (laughs) So um, I'm going to try to just speed along and keep things moving. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so today I have a finished object. I have two works in progress. I have some stuff to discuss in prime time, um, which mainly will be things that I got for my birthday back in July, and also a couple acquisitions from a trip that I had, or the trip that I took to Toronto with some of my friends um, the July 4th weekend. And then Emily's Random Corner, which you might see what I might be talking about um, over here. But uh, yeah, so let's get on with it. So first up is finished objects. My first finished object was around my neck during the introduction portion of this. It is the Odyssey Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I made this beautiful, beautiful shawl as part of a knit along with the Purple Pearl in Toronto. Um, Just a funny story about that. So I took a trip to Toronto with my high school best friends, July 4th weekend. I meant to come back on July 6th so that I could be in the United States for a wedding on July 7th. American Airlines had different plans for me and canceled my flight, Could could not get me on a return flight until Monday. So I was stuck in Toronto by myself for two extra days than I had planned. So I, you know, my friends left and I ended up going to the Purple Pearl in Toronto and they were such a lovely group of knitters and crafters and um, they welcomed me with open arms and I was browsing and looking for some uh, Canadian yarn which I ended up using in my shawl and once I happened upon this yarn Um, one of the ladies who worked there said, oh, well, we have a shawl kickoff happening in about an hour for the Odyssey shawl by Hohi Locatelli if you want to join our knit along. And I thought, well, I don't really have anywhere to be other than to check into my Airbnb. So I joined the knit along and it was super fun. They had some beverages and cookies and snacks. Um, and there were probably six people there casting on this shawl. So I purchased this yarn and cast it on. Um, and I think actually the knit along ended on August uh, 17th, um, which I'm not sure when I'll upload this, but it's Sunday. So um, yeah, so that was awesome. And um, this is the finished shawl. It has this beautiful lace detail in each of the three sections. This is uh, Julie Azalyn Lizu DK. This gray color here is pixelated. Um, This really dark navy color is licorice, and then this cream color, I had to pick it because um, it was Emily, or it was spelled differently, it was spelled E-M-I-L-E with an accent over the E, Um, Julie Aslin, Aseline I think maybe, um, is uh, Canada native so I got some Canada yarn and I immediately made it into a project it's a really 
it has a really long wingspan um, so it's kind of hard to show it has this pico bind off which honestly I wasn't really a fan of doing but I guess it looks nice um, I have on my Instagram stories um, saved in, in the saved stories I have just some footage of how this looked when I pinned it out and blocked it and speaking of that this top this it's a crescent shaped shawl and so this what I'm holding at the top here this is supposed to be the top and I don't know if anyone else has had difficulty with this but this garter tab it just wants to kind of make it more triangular at the top if you can see that as opposed to just going straight across even though I blocked the heck out of this um, and when we did the shawl kickoff the shop owner Jen had some tips for trying to loosely um, loosely knit the first couple stitches of each round so that you wouldn't get so that it would be flat and and more easily able or more blockable I suppose uh, but it just still wants to kind of spring back up but it really turned out lovely um, I've worn it to work a couple times because even though it is August it is freezing in my office so you always need something either around your shoulders or around your neck so um, I'll just I'll insert a couple pictures of me here styling it uh, I've styled it like how he has styled it in her pattern picture but also I just kind of like wearing it just like this around my neck um, and there's a bunch of ways you can you can wear it and uh, this is also this is a free pattern on Ravelry um, it was a pattern that Ho he did and she wanted to give back to the community and decided to make it a free pattern and she also I think was inspired by Canada when she um, wrote the pattern so it's just a nice kind of memory from the trip in Toronto which wasn't wasn't the best at times especially because I got stuck there and I ended up missing my friend's wedding but um, the ladies at the Purple Pearl were wonderful and I just felt so welcome there so I'm very grateful for that and to be a virtual participant in the knit along. So. One last thing about the Odyssey shawl, I wanted to show you the yarn caked up, at least what's left of it. I have about 20 grams of each skein. So this was the pixelated and here was the licorice. And then here was the Emily. And that's all I have to say about the Odyssey shawl. Next up is a project that's living in this project bag that I got for my birthday, which I'll talk about in the primetime segment. It is my Cafe Knitting Shawl by Stephen West. This was on my 2019 Make 9, and I have finally cast it on, and I will show you what it looks like so far. So first, the yarn. Um, the, I am using for color one, it's a three color sport weight shawl. For color number one, I am using Utopia. Um, let me just check what the color is. This is Tree Swallow in Ridge Sport. It's 100% fine wool. Uh, for the second color, I'm using Rita Mae Yarns in the Turtle Beach colorway. This is also a sport weight yarn. And then I have to cake this up. I think I will cake this up before I leave for my trip because I think I'm going to work on this a lot over um, the trip. This is Dragonfly Fibers. Um, it is their Damsel Sport Base. I think it's called T Titania. Yep. Um, and this is 100% Superwash Merino. I believe that is the yarn, um, what the what the fiber content is also on the Rita Mae yarns. It's all just 100% wool, which is great. So this is what I have so far. Um, this is just in the Utopia. So it's an interesting design. Uh, if you look at the picture, which I'll put a picture here of the uh, pattern picture, um, it's kind of an odd looking shawl. So it's been an interesting experience. Um, I'm not loving just the process mainly because I'm not giving anything away because you can see that this is 
uh, knit one, purl one, but every row has this knit one, purl one, um, and it's like 25 stitches, but it's just, ugh, I just dread it every time it comes around. But um, this is just the first color, and there will be two more. I believe that you fade in the colors um, two, one and two, and then colors two and three. Uh, and I'm on section two of three sections of this first color. So that is the Cafe Knitting Shawl by Stephen West. Hopefully I will have some more progress on this um, when I return from vacation. Next up is a project that I showed for the first time on my last episode. Um, it is the Toe Up Socks with a Difference by Wendy Johnson. I just have this marker here to um, remind me that this is the this is the start of my row. It's hard to tell. I guess it it's just hard to tell which one is which as you're working on it. So yes, yeah, so this is um, the start of my row when, I, when I'm working and uh, this is how the stripes are looking. I'm on a gray section right now, um, but it is five color stripes. I am working on Chiaogu needles. These are um, US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters. Uh, this is two at a time, toe up as you can see, and the pattern is free. The yarn I am using is Knit Picks. Um, Felici self-striping in the ribbit color and the project is living in this adorable project bag that is uh, that was knit that was made for me by uh, my friend Bethany who is Creaky Pines on Instagram and it's just the cutest bag and perfect for socks so I've been using it for my, all my sock projects uh, since Bethany gifted this to me and it has a drawstring bag. So those are my two at a time toe up socks. I am knitting them for my dad. They were uh, a, a an IOU gift for Father's Day. So hopefully he'll be getting those soon. I think I'll also bring these with me on my trip. Before I move on to prime time, I wanted to talk about a project that I will be casting on in the very near future. I know several episodes ago I said that I was done test knitting and that I had sworn it off and that I just felt like I couldn't commit to projects because then it felt like an obligation and yada yada yada. If you want to hear that spiel, go back several episodes and you'll see my, my test knitting woes. Well, I have agreed to test knit a project, <laughs> but I think this one will be different than the others for a few reasons. Um, the first is that I am going on a trip uh, in a few days to Hawaii and I will be on a plane there for, well I'll be on two planes but my total travel time is like 11 hours. Uh, so I think I'll be getting a lot of knitting time in there and then I'm going from Hawaii to Denver um, so that's more time in the plane so I'll be having a lot of, I'll be having a lot of time devoted to plane knitting. I have my two active works in progress right now, which are this Stephen West Cafe knitting shawl and the, the socks I'm working on. And I'm kind of getting a little bored with each of those. Socks are just socks. It's like a vanilla, it's a vanilla sock. There's nothing special going on. And the Stephen West shawl, I just, I just, that knit one, pearl one, I just, I don't, I can only take so much of it. So I figured this would be a perfect project. Um, it is called the Cobbled Path Cowl. It is by Lydra Scott, and it is a two-color color work cowl. And I signed up to test knit this, and it's interesting because she releases the instructions in three parts. So she wants to see you progress through the first part before she sends you the second part, and progress through the second part before she sends you the third part. Um, and so that's another reason why I think this is going to be different than the others because you don't just get all the instructions at once. You kind of want to work toward a smaller goal of finishing each um, third of the, the pattern. So I have the yarn that I'm going to be knitting the cowl um, currently in my Rock Solid Designs project bag, which is uh, my I'm just getting the cat hair off of it, but it, it has all these different kinds of beer on it, which I just thought. 
I, I I'm a big fan of beer and uh, it's so cute um, and so this is two skeins I've decided to use this Sirdar Snuggly double knitting um, it is 55% nylon, 45% acrylic. This is just like a nice cream color. And then uh, for the color work section, I'll drop a picture of the cowl here so that you can see what it looks like. But for the color work kind of flowery motif, I had, this is, both, both of these are from Stash. Um, I've had this for a really long time. So this is, let me just get the band. This is Simplicity by Haiku. 55% um, superwash merino, 28% acrylic, and 17% nylon. So these are different fiber contents that I'm using together. Um, I'm not really worried because it's just a cowl. It's not like it's a garment, but um, I might just take a couple extra precautions. Um, I'm not sure how it, will, how it will work when I wash it, but um, you know, they're both mixed. mixed um, they both have mixed fiber in them so I, I'm not too worried about it um, you know they both have acrylic and nylon and then this one just has some wool in it that the Sirdar does not. This Sirdar if you are a longtime viewer you might remember because I bought this in uh, Minnesota to make a baby sweater to make this this baby sweater. <laughs> So I have several skeins of the Seardar Snuggly DK. I had purchased more skeins of the Seardar Snuggly DK. So I doubt that um, I, well, I, get, I have enough if I do want to make that baby sweater. And I think the smallest size takes two skeins or maybe the, um, the first two sizes take two skeins. So I'm using one skein on this cowl, but I have plenty more, not in this color, if I do want to make that baby sweater. So I'm excited to start test knitting this cowl. I have the first uh, third of the pattern instructions and I'll probably be finished with that and be able to send Lidra a picture of my progress once I land in Oahu. That's all I have for actual knitting, so if you're not interested in seeing my acquisitions in my primetime segment, thanks for watching. I will check in with you next time, um, but if you're here for some um, new things that I've acquired, just stick around. <laughs> so first up, I had mentioned it previously because I have a project living in here, is this beautiful project bag that my parents gave me for my birthday. Um, it is by, I want to get the name right, Textures by Tammy Daniker Bags and Clutches. My parents bought this at a craft fair. Um, it is a drawstring bag. It has this cork handle on it, which is really cool. And then this cork bottom, and you can see it's flat, so it just sits upright wherever you have it, which I love about this bag. I just love that it can just kind of sit open like this, and you can pull your yarn from it. It also has this, um, hopefully you can see it. Okay, yeah. So it has um, a pocket and a um, like a steel ring that you can feed yarn through. I really just am in love with this bag, so thank you to my mom and my dad for getting me this. They really know, um, they really know the way to my uh, knitter and crocheter heart. And they also got me a Michael's gift card, which is great because I still go to Michael's for knitting needles, um, notions, and some yarn that I will use for um, baby projects or if I want cotton yarn I'll get I'll get yarn there so I'm super excited to use that. My husband gifted me my first set of interchangeable needles. So these are from Knit Picks. They are the Options Interchangeable Nickel Plated Needle Set. They're the needle sizes US 4 through US 11 and I believe they come with a uh, 20, 24 inch cable and then I think it's a 32. So I really enjoy these. Um, they're not as, I prefer Chiagu's. 
Uh, definitely not as expensive as Chow Goose, but these are just a great, um, uh, this is a great set to have um, as my first set. And I am already using the uh, size six in my cafe knitting shawl. So that was something else that I got for my birthday, which was super exciting. Of course, I had to try them out and immediately cast something on. So I chose that shawl that had been kind of waiting in the wings for the perfect opportunity for me to cast on. Some of my friends got me this book, Geek Knits, which is so cool. I'm a geek. Uh, this is over 30 projects for fantasy fanatics, science fiction fiends, and knitting nerds. I would highly recommend this for um, a fiber share package if you participate in fiber share or if you um, ha have somebody you know who enjoys knitting and um, is a nerd, um, then you can get them this or I guess a geek. But uh, I just flagged a couple of the projects that I really liked. So the first one is Where No Dog or Cat Has Gone Before. It's this little um, Star Trek uh, pet sweater. And here's the other picture of it. The second one I flagged is uh, Harry Potter inspired. It is the Muggle Artifact sweater. And uh, the sweater has um, different designs on it that are uh, plugs and cords, plugs and lightning, sine waves, light bulbs, Tesla coils, so all kind of like nerdy things. I thought that was really cool. Uh, the third one I like is this poison ivy wrap. Um, just a really beautiful wrap. That one's on the, the cover of the book. And then the last one, of course, is a Game, Game of Thrones inspired one. It is the Direwolf. And they even got a picture of the Direwolf with George R.R. R. Martin, which is kind of cool. And here's a better shot of it. So um, one of my friends who got me this book um, is a really big Game of Thrones fan. I don't think she watches the podcast. So um, I'll say it here first that I'm definitely making her a Direwolf for the holidays. So this is uh, Geek Knits. I would highly recommend. It's just a great, fun book and some really neat projects that you might want to make. Next up are a few books that my dad got me at either flea markets or thrift shops or antique stores. I don't know, dad, you'll have to mention them down below. Um, but he got me some books and I think I think books are really un underrated in the age of Ravelry where patterns are just available online um, in single PDFs. Uh, so I wanted to show you the books I got and then also for the ones that are the project books I flagged um, several projects in there that I thought were really neat and that I could see myself making in the future. So the first book that he got me was Knitting Over the Edge which is like um, a really awesome book if you are designing. Um, it's by Nikki Epstein. Yes, Nick, Nikki Epstein. I also have Knitting on the Edge. Um, and this one has unique ribs, cords, appliques, colors, and nouveau. So this is just a fun book to have, almost like a stitch dictionary, but for different design elements. So that is Knitting Over the Edge. The next one that he got me is Weekend Hats. And as you can see, I flagged seven in here that I really liked and thought about thought that I would want to make. So one of these is The Wanderer Cat by Jared Flood of Brooklyn Tweed. Um, I also like The Topiary Beanie by Jennifer Lang McKenzie. The Hued Toque by Gudrun Johnston. So I mean there's some recognizable um, designers in here which is awesome. Pebbled Beanie by Elizabeth Parker. The Briar Toque. Toque? I think it's Toque. The Briar Toque by Cicely Glowick McDonald. And um, I'd encourage you to look these up on Ravelry. You probably could purchase them as single patterns. <laughs> if you don't want to go and buy this book. But uh, the fifth or sixth one I saw in here was Leaves Long Beanie by Melissa Labar. It's a really, really nice one. I could see making that for some friends as a holiday gift. And then the last one was The Drift Toque by Jocelyn 
J. Tooney. Next book that my dad got me was Great Garter Stitch by Jean Leinhauser and Rita Weiss. Flagged a few in here. Some of these were a little dated, but I did find a few that I really liked. I really like this Diagonal Blocks Topper by Nazanin Fard. There's a shot of that. The second one I flagged in here was Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, which is this lovely uh, shawl. It's by the same designer as um, that sweater I just showed. Nazanin Fard. And then the last one is The Reversible Diagonal Afghan by Joyce Renee Wyatt. Really like this one. I like that it's reversible. Can't really go wrong. So that is Great Garter Stitch. The last book I have for show and tell is uh, Textured Knits by Julia Cooper. And I like the Stitch Effect sweater. I guess these are all by Julia Cooper. Um, I really like the sweater that's pictured on the cover and that, oh, nope, there's one before that. So I like diagonal stitch cardigan. That is the one pictured on the cover. I'll be okay. <laughs> um, and then the last one that I flagged is the decorative edge top. So just goes to show you that even in the age of Ravelry, it is really awesome to find some books, especially that are used. And even if you find two or three projects, it's worth buying to have in your library. Last two things I wanted to show you in prime time were uh, some acquisitions from Toronto. So obviously I got the Julie Azeline yarn to make the Odyssey shawl, but while I was at the Purple Pearl, I also picked up two skeins of Bamboo Pop. This is 50% cotton, 50% bamboo, 100 grams, um, 266 meters, 292 yards. And they had uh, samples of the Cancun boxy lace top knit up in two skeins of Bamboo Pop. So it was very economical. Um, I can't remember exactly how much these were. They were definitely less than 15 US dollars per skein. They were probably like 10 or 12, but it was also in Canadian dollars. So everything there just felt more expensive. And then you go home and look at your credit card and you're like, oh, that actually wasn't that expensive. But anyway, I picked up this uh, gray and hot pink. So I will be knitting a Cancun um, lace boxy top out of this bamboo pop. I also was able to snag some buttons for my coffee bean cardigan that is still a work in progress. I'll show it to you now. Um, I didn't include it as a work in progress because the only thing I've done since I last showed it is finish a sleeve. I even have a, um, a little uh, marker here. This is where I was the last time I showed it on the podcast, but I did finish this sleeve and I have one to go um, unless anyone knows like a one-armed baby that would be interested in this, but um, yeah, so I'll be making the other sleeve. But I was on the lookout for some buttons to go with this little cardigan. Um, I thought about getting yellow buttons because of the collar and the uh, bottom ribbing and then the little sleeve cuffs. So we happened upon in Kensington Market a shop, they had a lot of different shops in there. Um, and I picked up two sets of buttons. Um, the ones here are antique buttons, and the other, I think they're, they're actually both sets are antique buttons, but uh, I'll have to see how I'm feeling when I'm done and which ones I want to use. But I got four of each of these buttons, and uh, so this is the first button I got. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this. Um, so that's the first button I got. Oh, Onyx is protesting. He wants some food, right, Ani? So here is the first kind of like 
it's like a light, light pale yellow. So, you know, that's what it would look like. I wanted to show, I don't know if you can see that. That's what it would look like with my little cardigan there. And then um, the ones that I think I'll probably end up using are these really cute little lemons. <laughs> so I thought that would be fun, especially because this uh, little cardigan might go to um, a, a mom who's expecting and lives in Florida. So I thought it would be cute to have a little bit of a tropical tropical button. So I hope you can see that. Um, the yellows aren't identical, but I think it would be really cute. So I have, ooh, I have four of these buttons and uh, four of four of these buttons to work with. Um, I think I think the sweater would pro or the cardigan would be perfect with four. And I'll probably use those lemon ones. Looking at it now, uh, but yeah. So that's the little coffee bean cardigan. I am making this out of uh, just some lily sugar and cream yarn. I have this yellow, and then the uh, main color is summer print and this will be my third skein of this yarn and it's 100% cotton. I figured that would be good for someone who is taken care of. It's going to be her third child so uh, you know just to be able to pop it in with other cotton garments and wash it like you would normally wash it. So I'm excited to finish that and now I feel even more inspired because I have those buttons. Last but not least for this episode is Emily's Random Corner. So this week I just wanted to share something that my husband made, which I'm very, very excited to eat. Um, he made pickles. So we currently have several vegetables growing in a garden that we have outside and we have regular cucumbers and pickling cucumbers. So this is, this is the first attempt at making pickles. Um, I asked him what he used to make the pickles. He, at this time, did not want to divulge quantities to comprise a full recipe because he said, well, I don't wanna be giving people a bad recipe if they don't turn out well, so, all right. But um, it is just white vinegar, water, garlic, and um, of course the pickles, and then we put a little bit of little Tabasco pepper in there. Um, so these will have to sit at least overnight, and these are pickle chips. And then he also went ahead and made spears, and those also have uh, various uh, peppers in them to make them a little bit to have a little bit of a kick. So I am super, super excited. And it's just, it, I, you know, we, we never pickled anything before, so hopefully these turn out good. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, we might have to add like a pickling spice if we do it again, or like coriander, I think. But um, he apparently found, found a recipe online that um, had things that we already had in our pantry. So I'll keep you posted on the pickles and if they turn out to be successful, then I will post the recipe that we used. That's all I have for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always great to come and chat. Um, for the next two weeks, I will be traveling for the most part. I'm going to be in Hawaii and then Colorado. So if you have recommendations for yarn shops in o Oahu, I'm planning to stop at Yarn Story. I think that might be it. Um, or if you have any recommendations for Colorado yarn shops, we are going to be in the Fort Collins area, Estes Park. Um, we'll, we'll be in Denver and I've been to a couple uh, yarn shops in Boulder already so but if you have any recommendations for uh, some must-see yarn shops in that in those areas let me know and um, I will see you when I get back from my vacation with hopefully more finished objects and perhaps some new acquisitions and until then I hope everyone's doing well and I will see you next time bye Onyx has spoken. <laughs> okay, bye.